Again, good morning. How are you doing? I'll be sharing my screen. That's great. I'll be sharing my screen. This is a continuation of our topic, Animal and Plant Cell. All right? Can you see my shared screen now? Can you see my... Okay. So again, we will start with the cell theory, okay? Again, cells are the basic unit of life in modern world. They are... Can you hear me now? Yeah. Okay. Thank you, Nicole. Again, let's start with the cell theory. The cells are the basic unit of life. Okay. In the modern world, they're the smallest known world that performs all life functions. Since cells are the basic unit of life, therefore, all organisms came from cells or a living thing came from a living thing only, right? All living organisms are either single-celled organisms. When you say single-celled, it is a unicellular organism or are multicellular organisms composed of many cells working together, okay? Robert Hooke's discovery about cell from a dead cork. Remember that Robert Hooke accidentally discovered cell and coined the, the term cell because he actually saw a dead cork under the microscope actually did not create an impact during his time because there are no researches at the time at the same time he actually uh did it prove it in in the science world that it is actually a cell but robert hook and anton van leeuwenhoek continued to make an observation nevertheless but it had taken 200 more years before it became generally accepted that all living things are made up of cells, which can reproduce by themselves by the process of cell division. Any, any questions so far? Grade 7? Grade 7. None. Please ask questions either in the middle of the discussion. It's okay with me. Okay? Just let me know if you are confused with the topic. Right? Okay. In 1838, the German botanist Matthias Jacob Sleden focused in the interest of study of plant cells. Sleden actually um, studied and focused on plant cells, while the German physiologist Theodor Schwann examined animal cells. Okay. So in the question or in your exam, if the question is asking about who act, who actually studied or focused studying plant cells under cell theory, it is Sleden. Okay, Matthias Jacob Sleden. But in the question, if the question is asking about who actually studied animal cells under cell theory, it is Theodore Swan. Okay, along with the findings of other scientists, they confirmed that all cells or that cells are the fundamental units of life and that the bodies of living organisms are made of cells. So this is now the start of the cell theory. Another scientist in the name of Rodolf Carl Virchow, okay, in 1858, proposed a third tenet in the cell theory stating that all cells come from other cells through the process of cell division. This is not the birth of cell division. So they observed that cells reproduce by themselves. How can these cells reproduce by themselves? This is in the process of cell division. Okay, In the cell division, it is actually divided into two. 
we have mitosis or the somatic cell, which has a complete set of chromosomes, and meiosis or meiotic cell division, which has which is the reproduction of gametes or sperms and eggs. Collectively, the concept of Sledon Swan and Virtue were summarized into what is known today as cell theory, which states that is memorized, is familiarized. Okay. The three statements in the cell theory. First is all organisms are composed of one or more cells. It is actually the concept of what? Concept of Sladen and Schwann. They actually confirm that all cells are composed of one or more cells. Okay? Cells are the smallest basic units of structure and functions in an organism. It was confirmed also by Schwann and Sladen. And cells arise only from previously existing cells. That's according to virtue. Question so far? Can you still hear me? Yes. Yep. Again, please ask questions. I am. I will be happy if you'll be asking questions so that uh, I may know also if you are still there or uh, you, you, you actually digested the topic. Okay. Let's continue with the cell organelles. Remember that your organelles are little organs. When you say organelles, it is actually little organs inside the cell. Okay, It is actually performing its own functions. Okay, Before, they thought that under the cell or inside the cell, there's... Um, it is a blank actually, you know? but because of the study, because of this high powered microscope, like your electron microscope, they saw a lot of activities inside the cell. Okay. An organelle is a subcellular structure that has one or more specific jobs to perform in the cell, much like an organ does in your body. That is why organelles are little organs. Okay. It is actually little organs. Organelles make up subunits of a cell. There are numerous of each with their own functions. There are a lot of it. Okay. The first would be the plasma membrane. It's the organelle that encapsulates the content of the cell. It is also known as cellular membrane. Again, plasma membrane and cellular membrane are actually the same. Okay. Apart from encapsulating the cell contents, plasma membrane also plays a vital role in regulating movements of substances. Because it covers now the cell, it actually regulates the, the movement of substances in and out of the cell. Okay. Later on, in, in your advanced um, biology, in your higher years, you'll be discussing how the movements of substances move in and out of the cell with the plasma membrane. Remember also that your plasma membrane is made up of two layers of phospholipid, okay? Or phospholipids by layer. You see phospholipid by layer? This is two layers of phospho, phosphorus, and lipids, fats. Phosphorus and fats. Lipids. Lipase or lipids. Lipase the enzyme right, to digest lipids or fats, okay? Question so far with plasma membrane or cellular membrane? Grade 7? Question so far? None. Buddy, how was your previous activity or previous lesson? Was it great? Did you understand the topic previously? Again, uh, you can you can have a personal message, or you can send me a personal message, or you can talk to me anytime with your lessons. It's okay with me. I am usually doing this with my previous student also. Okay. 
until now, they, they usually contact me with their lessons. Let's move now to cell wall. What is now the difference between cell wall and um, cellular membrane or plasma membrane? Cell wall, it is the most important component in a plant cell. So cell wall can only be found in a plant cell. Why? Because cell wall surrounds cell membrane and serves to strengthen and protect the cell. Again, this is to strengthen and protect the cell. Cell wall surrounds the cell and serves as strength and to protect the plant cell. Plant cell. So cell wall is for plant cell. Okay. Plant cell wall is chiefly composed of cellulose fibers. Cellulose because plant can perform photosynthesis. Okay. When an organism can perform photosynthesis, therefore it can create a cell wall. It depends upon, depends upon, okay? Like some bacteria, photosynthetic bacteria, they can create cell wall, but it's different. It is different from plant cell. To say bacteria is separated in the kingdom, okay? Right? Cell wall is chiefly composed of cellulose fibers in plants, but if it, in, if it is in bacteria or bacterial cell wall, it is composed of peptidoglycan, which is a polysaccharide, and lipopolysaccharides. Okay. Again, bacterial cell wall are composed of peptidoglycan, a polysaccharides, a chain of polysaccharides, and lipopolysaccharides. Lipopolysaccharides means lipids and fats. Okay. Do not be confused with these terms. These are just terminologies. Okay? I am not elaborating it. I am just giving you an information about bacteria. This is usually the one being destroyed by your antibiotics, the peptidoglycan and lipopolysaccharides. Okay? Let's move now to cytoplasm. Question with the cell wall. Any experiences with bacteria? Any experiences with plant? By the way, um, plant cell wall, which is composed of cellulose fibers, usually we cannot digest it, okay? That is why it is really healthy to eat veggies, vegetables. Because when you eat vegetables, the cell wall of the plant, you cannot digest it. Therefore, it, is actually, it will actually clean your large intestine or your colon, okay? Again, it prevents also what? It prevents constipation. Kana maglisod kaglibang, no? Because you are constipated. Because you're eating a lot of meat. You're not eating fruits and vegetables. That's the problem, okay? Eating fruits and vegetables will help you a lot in excreting or excre excretion. Okay? Because cellulose fibers, you cannot actually digest it, leaving your body to excrete it naturally, Okay? Let's move forward to cytoplasm. Cytoplasm is composed of protoplasm in which all other cell organelles are suspended. Okay? Again, all your organelles is being suspended in the protoplasm. Okay? Other term for cytoplasm. Okay? Now, what is the importance of having cytoplasm in the organelle or in the cell? The importance of having protoplasm is in order for the organelles to be suspended. They need to be suspended. Why? If they are not suspended, they cannot perform their functions. Okay? They need to be in a gel environment with liquid. How can they travel or how can they perform their activity or how can they perform their metabolic processes if they are not suspended, if there, there are no materials coming in and coming out, right? That is not the importance of cytoplasm. It is really important to have a cytoplasm in a cell. Leaving your cell dehydrated is different. It cannot it, or it will not perform its, its metabolic processes. Okay? Let's move forward with the nucleus. This is one of the important... Um, 
considered as one of the important organelles in a cell. Because nucleus is the storehouse of genetic information in the form of DNA inside the cell. Remember that your DNA contains genetic material, deoxyribonucleic acid. This is the set of instruction or genetic material. Without DNA or without the nucleus, your cell cannot perform what? Cell division. And you cannot transfer the genes from the parents to offspring. That's how important the nucleus is. Remember that the nucleus is considered as, if you have your computer, the CPU, the central processing unit. Why? Sure. Why it is the central processing unit? Your nucleus now contains a lot of information that controls everything in the cell. Okay? Even, the, even your size, even your hair, everything, it controls in the form of DNA, the set of instructions. In eukaryotic cell, the nucleus is enclosed in the nuclear membrane. That is why if you're going to look at a eukaryotic cell, what is eukaryotic cell again? Yo means true. Karyon means nucleus. So it has a true nucleus. Okay? Enclosed in the nuclear membrane, therefore, the nucleus there is circular because it is enclosed in the nuclear membrane. It is the, the organelle that controls the hereditary traits of an organism by directing such process as protein synthesis and cell division, among others. Remember, again, that without your nucleus, there is no cell division and protein synthesis, leaving your cell dead, just like what? Robert Hooke saw under the microscope, he actually saw a dead cork cell. So there is there is no nucleus there because the, the cell already died. Or he actually saw a dead cell. In prokaryotes, pro means primitive, okay, old. Karyon means nucleus or it has a primitive nucleus, okay. The DNA lacks nuclear membrane. Okay, because prokaryotes lack nuclear membrane, therefore the genetic material that is scattered, hence it has a nucleoid instead of nucleus. So again, bacteria is a prokaryote. If you're going to look at bacteria under the microscope, you cannot see a DNA enclosed in a nuclear membrane. Instead, you can see a scattered genetic material in the form of nucleoid. Okay, question so far? Sure. Why there are a lot of terminologies? Again, grade 7, please do not be confused. It's, it is a matter of how you accept the information. I have, I, have learned, I have learned this one when I was still in grade 6. We discussed this one in, in my grade 6 time. Okay? But until now, I can still remember it because I live with it. Again, science is not just a subject for me. It's my life. So if you're going to live with your subject, not just because of the grade, because this is, this is not because of the grade, okay? You will remember the topic every now and then, and you're paying for it, okay? I want you to internalize in every topic. Oh, well, definitely, grades are just numbers. That's literally, okay? It will not defy your future grade 7. What defies your future is what you had learned and how can you apply this learning. Sir, how can we apply this learning? Okay. Remember that understanding nature and understanding um, your body starts from the basics. It starts from the cell. Are you still with me, grade 7? Are you still with me? Yes. Sir. Again, understanding nature starts, or understanding yourself, starts from the basics. The basics are this, the cell. Okay. How can you understand yourself? Understand first the cell. 
And you can discuss it by your own after when you internalize the topic. And this is a great topic for me because this is my stepping stone. No? Uh, my aim before is to become a doctor and now I, become, I, be, I became a teacher. It's a great achievement, right? Let's move forward. Ribosomes. Ribosomes are tiny organelles that contain RNA. RNA is ribonucleic acid. So I will not elaborate RNA. Or we will be discussing RNA in your higher years. And specific proteins within the cytoplasm. Within the cell, ribosomes are directly involved in the manufacture of proteins using their RNA and amino acids. Remember that your ribosomes are considered as protein factory of the cell. We say protein factory of the cell. It is, it is actually the one who created, who, who will create or who created the proteins. So there are two types of ribosomes. Later, we'll, discuss, we'll be discussing the two types of ribosomes. This process involves decoding the information contained in the mRNA. mRNA stands for messenger ribonucleic acid and using amino acids to produce the required proteins. They are considered as the protein factor of the cell. Yes, definitely. Because they produce a lot of proteins in the cell. For the cell to what? To use. There are two types of ribosomes. The first is the free ribosomes. By the way, they are named after the place they are in. Okay, Free ribosomes are actually named free ribosomes because they are scattered in the cytoplasm. They are just in the cytoplasm, but they still perform their functions. Attached ribosomes, they are attached to the rough endoplasmic reticulum or rough ER. Okay? Again, free ribosomes are scattered in the cytoplasm, hence they are called free ribosomes. While attached ribosomes, they are attached to the, right, the rough endoplasmic reticulum, hence the name attached. So they are actually stick on the rough endoplasmic reticulum. That is why rough ER is called rough ER because of the attached ribosomes. If you're going to look at it under the microscope, the ER, the endoplasmic reticulum, actually has a lot of attached ribosomes in it, in the surface. Mitochondria. Okay. It is considered as the powerhouse of the cell. It is one also of the important um, organelle in, in, in a cell because it is now the one who is, it is now the one considered as the powerhouse of the cell or where the power or where the energy came from. Okay, Mitochondria, plural, mitochondrion, singular, are some of the largest organelles within the cell. Why largest? Again, because they generate a lot of energy. It plays an important role in respiration where they generate ATP. ATP stands for adenosine triphosphate. Again, adenosine triphosphate. When you say adenosine triphosphate, ATP, it is actually the energy currency of the cell. Okay, Your cell actually use ATP for metabolic processes. Sure, there are a lot of terminologies and we are overloading. Now, we will take this little by little, okay? Again, I know that some of you has an idea already in the past about this. And some of you just encountered the terms. It's okay, okay? I'll take, we will be taking more time. Don't worry, no? I will not leave you behind. Don't worry. Again, ATP are the energy currency of the cell. You see energy currency of the cell? This is the one being used by your cell for metabolic processes, okay? From, sub, from substrates in the presence of oxygen. Remember that we, as a multicellular organism, use oxygen. That is why, again, the oxygen there is for ATP to be used, okay? It is energy currency of the cell. ATP stores energy in the form of chemical bonds and is released whenever it is needed for virus cell functions. This is the reason also why, why your sperm cells swim fast. 
because the tail of the sperm cell, we want to look at the sperm cell under a microscope, it has a lot of mitochondria in there, leaving your, your sperm cell swim past. That is because of the mitochondria. Okay? Let's move forward. Vacuoles. Maybe describe a space inside the cell and does not contain any cytoplasm. Okay. Scientists before are confused why there are some spaces in the cytoplasm which is blank. It is considered as a blank space. It is surrounded by a membrane and filled with a liquid, with a fluid. And vacuole stores various molecules including enzymes, waste products of the cell, water, and even food material depending on the type of the cell. Okay. In plant cell, vacuole stores food, stores water, and stores even waste products. That is why we're going to look at um, a plant cell. It is a cube type or a square type. So you're going to look at a plant cell. I think I have illustration here. If you're going to look at a plant cell, it is a cube type. And it has a large vacuole. Have you seen the large vacuole? Grade 7? Can you see the large vacuole? Okay. It has a large vacuole compared to a plant cell. A plant cell is too small. Sure. Why, why plant cell has a large vacuole compared to animal cell? Animal cell is only small because in a plant cell, vacuole is being used to store food. Okay? And remember that your plant cell can perform photosynthesis or, shall we say, can create their own food. They are considered autotrophic or producers. They can produce their own food. Okay? Going back. Question so far with vacuoles. Question so far? None. None. Okay. <clears throat> Forward by cytoskeleton. Okay. A cytoskeleton, cyto means cell. Okay. Skeleton means the skeleton or the structure. Okay. It is made up of microtubules and microfilaments by spreading throughout the cell in the cytoplasm. This is the reason why your cell will eventually what? Return to its original position because of the cytoskeleton. It helps maintain the shape of the cell while also ensuring the elasticity of the cell. Okay? The cytoskeleton is also involved in anchoring or anchorage or anchoring the nucleus and supporting the cell contents. Again, this is the reason, cytoskeleton is the reason why your cell will return to its original form because of the cytoskeleton. Plastids. Okay. Plastids are type of organelle that is only found or you can only found plant, uh, plastids in the plant cell. Okay. These are only found in plant cells and algae there are different types of plastids that include chloroplast chromoplast and generotoplast okay and even eucoplast chloroplasts from the root word chloro chlorophyll chloroplast contain the pigment chlorophyll that captures energy from sunlight for photosynthesis again it contains what chlorophyll or photosynthesis therefore chloroplast is in the site of photosynthesis the process through which plant produce food where is the site for photosynthesis usually in the leaves okay that is why it is colored green because of the chloroplasts next is chromoplasts are present in certain photosynthetic Eukaryotes. Some eukaryotic organisms are photosynthetic. Okay? They are primarily involved in the production of 
what? Production of pigment called carotenoids. Just like your, what? The pigments in your carrots. No? They're colored orange because of the carotin or carotenoids. These pigments are involved in absorbing light as well as protecting chlorophyll in some plants. Gerontoplasts, this is a type of plastid that develops from the chloroplast during the, the senescence in foliates. This is now the colored yellow, okay? The colored yellow in your, what? In your leaves, no? It will leave your leaves colored yellow. An important role in salvaging nutrients and other important material as a cell dies. Salvaging is not killing, huh? Salvaging or salvage is saving. Salvage, salvation. Okay? Again, the term salvaging or salvage is saving. Okay? Saving the nutrients and other material as, it, as the cell dies. Remember that your cell, when your cell turns yellow, it will eventually die. Okay? But because of this Gerontoplasts or gerontoplastids, materials are being saved. Okay? Leucoplasts. Compared to other plastids, leucoplasts are unpigmented organelles. Leucoplast is specialized such functions as the storage of starch, lipids, and proteins. Okay. Again, leucoplasts are for storage. Let's move now to, we still have four minutes left, endoplasmic reticulum. So what is the function of, of your endoplasmic reticulum? It is actually found in the eukaryotic cell. Again, take note, endoplasmic reticulum can only be found in the eukaryotic cell. Endoplasmic reticulum is an organelle that forms an interconnected network of platen sacs or sister name. Okay, platen sacs. It is actually a platen sacs under the microscope. Like some of the other organelles found in eukaryotes, ER is enclosed in a membrane. Okay, again, membrane-bound organelle. The ER is divided into two regions that we vary in structure and function. Or types. These are the types of ER. The first is the smooth endoplasmic reticulum. Again, it is termed smooth endoplasmic reticulum because it lacks ribosomes in its surface. Therefore, leaving the endoplasmic reticulum smooth. Smooth. There is no ribosomes attached to it. As a result, it is more smooth in appearance compared to rough ER. It is involved in the synthesis of lipids. Again, smooth ER or smooth endoplasmic reticulum is involved or directly involved in the synthesis of lipids or phospholipids and carbohydrates that are used to build up cell. Okay? Remember that your cell is composed of what? Proteins, lipids, and carbohydrates. Therefore, smooth endoplasmic reticulum now plays a vital role in building up the cell membrane. The second one is the rough endoplasmic reticulum. Okay, unlike the smooth ER, rough has rough ER has a lot of attached ribosomes to its surface. So it, what makes rough ER rough because of the attached ribosomes in it. It is involved in the manufacture of virus proteins in the cells. On the other hand, the rough ER involved in the production of antibodies, antibodies, insulin as well as transportation of proteins into the smooth ER. Okay, again, the smooth ER plays a vital role in creating or in metabolizing or the, in the synthesis of proteins, phospholipid, carbohydrates, to build up some membrane. While rough ER, it is involved directly in the production of antibodies, insulin, as well as the transportation of proteins to the smooth ER. So they are actually interconnected. Okay? 
Question so far with rough ER and smooth ER. Grade 7? None. Okay. Let's move now to centrioles. Okay. These are cylindrical organelles found in most eukaryotic cells. They contain a tube molecules known as microtubules that helps the chromosome and they help the chromosome move them during the cell division. Remember that during cell division, your chromosome will be in line. In line. In, to be prepared in the possible cell division. So your centrioles now will move. Okay, will move in order for the for the for the chromosome to be divided. Okay. Again, centrioles are responsible in pulling or separating the what the chromosomes during cell division. Okay. Later, in your, in your higher years, we'll be discussing how cell division works with centrioles and how spindle fibers pull 